One and only one the first tip is recording audio with built-in timestamps. And also I want to point out, I'm in the OneNote desktop that's been upgraded and revitalized because OneNote desktop is coming back. This is the new Office UI, the beautiful purple on the top. The new UI here is a little more rounded. So the first tip is inserting audio. To do that, I'm going to record audio and take notes. So go to the insert menu and click record audio. Now it's recording as I'm taking notes. So here's me taking notes. I'll hit enter. This is a really important point. So I want to make sure to capture it. Hit enter one more time. Here's the end of my notes. Now when I'm done, I go up here and click stop. Now what's cool is I can record the audio. So here's where it was recorded. I can double click to play. Now it's recording as I'm taking notes. So I can go forwards here, notes, backwards and whatnot. Enter. That's pretty nice, but watch how it highlights the audio as I go through. So this little hover here, I'll click play. So here's me taking notes. I'll hit enter. And see it this highlights. This is a really important point. Automatically. So to capture it. Here's the end of my notes. So it follows along with the audio in time synchronization. Really slick. We do support recording audio in Windows 10. It doesn't have the time sync like you have in OneNote desktop right here. The second tip is copying text directly out of photos or images. So here's an example. I've taken a photo of a Harry Potter page and I'm going to click on the photo and then right click and choose copy text from picture. And using OCR, which will happen automatically, I can extract that text. So choose copy text from picture. Now I'm just going to click directly next to the picture and do control V to paste. And it extracts all of that text right out of the image. Super handy and a big time saver. And related, you can even search the text of a picture automatically. So here we have a image and it says Harry in the image here. In the upper right, I'm going to click and I'm just going to type Harry. And immediately check that out. It highlighted Harry in the image and it highlighted Harry in the image here. This feature is also available in the Windows 10 app. It takes about a day for the service to process, so it's a bit slower. In the desktop right here, it happens within seconds of pasting the image. The third tip is one of my very favorites. It is the print to OneNote feature. This allows me to print any type of document or file directly into OneNote and then annotate or type right on top of it. It's like you have digital paper. What I'll do is go to the insert menu here and choose file printout. This opens up the file menu and I'm going to scroll down and choose my solar system PowerPoint deck. So I'm going to print the slides of the PowerPoint directly onto the page. Click insert. What you can see is that it has printed every single slide onto this page. So my beautiful solar system deck is now on a big digital piece of paper in OneNote. And I can go in here and I can double click and I can take notes on top of it. I can do draw menu so I can go here and you know, I can go and circle certain things and I can do whatever I want. This is basically like digital paper. And this is especially interesting in the education scenario where you might want to have lots of taking notes right on top of slides. I can print anything into OneNote. As an example, I'll show the browser printing. Here's a blog article and maybe I want to print this whole thing out into OneNote just like digital paper. If I go to the three dot menu in my browser and just choose print, now it has print preview and go over to the printer and instead of doing your normal tree killing paper printer, instead, in this case, I'll choose the OneNote desktop printer. If you're using Windows 10, it'll pull up the OneNote Windows 10 printer and then choose print. What it will do is pull OneNote to the forefront and say, hey, where do you want to put this into OneNote? I'm just going to leave it on this current page and I'll click OK. And immediately it put that entire printout right here into OneNote. And again, this is now like digital paper and I can go in and do whatever I want right on top of it. That same OneNote printer works in Word or Excel. You can literally print anything you want into OneNote. The fourth tip is setting any picture to the background in OneNote, which will let you type or ink right on top of it. So back to our Harry Potter example, I've got a snapshot of a Harry Potter page. I'm just going to paste right here onto my OneNote page. Now normally once it's here, if I want to type on it, it's kind of tricky sometimes. I just want it to be like a digital background that I can scribble on top of. So click once to select the picture, then right click and then choose set picture as background. Now it is totally set to the background of the page. So I can go here, for example, on draw and maybe I want to do stuff right on top of it, do some underlines and red pen. I can also go and click and type on top of it. So right here, if I go click, I can type and now I can type on it 
and I can highlight this and maybe I can make it red and make it really big. So again, this just lets you put that picture to the background and then you can do whatever you want on top of it. This feature is also supported in OneNote for Windows 10 as well as iPad. The fifth tip is Outlook meeting integration with OneNote. Now I'm here in the desktop and this also works in the Windows 10 app as well. But on the home tab, I'm going to go over to meeting details and click to drop this down. This pulls all the meetings in Outlook from my calendar, which I have going today. And I'm going to choose the one that I want to take meeting notes on. We have a TPS report planning meeting, so I'll click this. This pulls in all the information from that Outlook meeting in my calendar. So the meeting subject, the date, the location, even the link back to the Outlook item if I want to open that meeting. It also pulls in the attachments. So I've got a Word doc and a PowerPoint about our TPS report planning. And then who are the participants? So we have Kara, Bill Lumberg, Alex, and Ella. And then I have a place I can take notes. So if I just click right down here, this is really handy if you're just late to a meeting, you want to get up and running and make sure you have the link back to it, pull in all this information and you're ready to go. The sixth tip is a nice one that goes in conjunction with meeting details, and that is emailing a page. So let's say I've had my meeting here and I finished all the notes and I've taken notes and I want to send this out in an email. From the home tab, I can go over here to say email a page and I'm going to click this. This opens up an Outlook email automatically. It puts it to all the right people. It inserts the attachments that were on the page. All the meeting notes are right here below and it's ready to send off. So again, this is just a big time saver. The seventh tip is the immersive reader. The immersive reader is an inclusively designed tool that helps make reading more accessible. I'm personally a big fan because I work on the immersive reader myself. So I'm in the Windows 10 app right now and I'm going to go to the view menu and you're going to choose immersive reader. What you see is we've reduced distractions on the page. The bottom, I can hit the play button. The study of Earth's landforms is called physical geography. We have text to speech, word and line highlighting. I can go and change the way the page looks. So with text preferences, I can make the text much bigger. I can increase line spacing because that can help reduce visual crowding. I can change the background colors. Some people prefer reading with different background colors. I can even change the fonts. I click on grammar options. I can break words into syllables with a single click like this. I can highlight the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, all sorts of parts of speech. I can even customize those colors if I'd like. And you can see it's very personalized. And we'll make the text a little bit smaller and choose a different color. Lastly, if I go to reading preferences here, I can turn on line focus. This can help focus my eyes so I can read one line at a time and I can still read aloud. Glaciers or rivers. And I can choose one line or three lines or five lines. I can turn that off. And lastly, I can translate in over 110 languages. So in this case, I'm going to choose Spanish. I'll choose document. And let's listen to this read out loud in Spanish. El estudio de los accidentes geográficos de la tierra se llama. So really powerful tool that's built in and inclusive. It's part of the OneNote for Windows 10 app. It's not built into OneNote desktop. But in the near future, we will be rolling out an update to OneNote Desktop where this full immersive reader is built in, so watch for that. The eighth tip is dictation, also known as speech to text. This is built into the OneNote for Windows 10 app, and on the Home tab right here, there is a Dictate button. I have many languages to choose from. You can see all of them here, but we're going to keep it in English right now, and I'll click Dictate and then start talking. Now I am dictating in the OneNote for Windows 10 app, period. Speech to text makes it really easy to write down your thoughts without having to use the keyboard, period. When you're done, just click the dictate button again to turn it off. Dictate is not built in by default to the OneNote desktop app, but this is going to be coming in the future. So stay tuned and watch out for updates in the desktop app for OneNote. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.